Still muted. Okay. There you are. Good morning, Emmanuel. The morning. reading is Hebrew. Hello? The reading is Hebrews 11, 1 through 6. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain's. Through that, he received approval as God himself giving approval to his gifts. He died, but through his faith, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not experience death, and he was not found because God had taken him. For it was attested before he was taken away that he had pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would approach him must believe that he exists, and then he rewards those who seek him. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Andrea. We hear these words from the Gospel of Luke, and they are spoken by the priest Zechariah, um, who had been visited by an angel. He was the husband of Elizabeth, the uncle of Jesus. And he spoke these words. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people for the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. I knew that I would not be with you for the, this coming Christmas. So it was in my heart to celebrate with you all here on the 25th of July. It was handy that Christmas in July happened to fall on the 25th this year, right on a Sunday, very convenient. So I wanted to bring out all of the joy and the excitement that is so much a part of those gatherings in December and to share it with you all right now. At the same time, though, I remembered that I was not with you this past Christmas because my husband had just passed the week before, and I was still teetering there on that threshold of mortality where the presence of angels means something so very different. And it has been that way ever since this constant shifting back and forth between light and dark, joy and sorrow, knowing and not knowing. In truth, this is the reality of our existence at all times with major life upheavals, simply throwing that universal truth into harsh relief. We can all go along with some sense of purpose for weeks, for months, even years at a time, and then life turns a corner, or we trip over a stone in the path, and there we are. We find ourselves suddenly uncertain, suddenly profoundly lost. The faith that carried us kind of seems to evaporate, or maybe it's still there. You can sense it nearby, but it has become this kind of mysterious thing and you've forgotten its name. And so you struggle to call it back to yourself. Though this has certainly been the most difficult, it is not the first time that I've experienced this jolting shift between feeling grounded one minute and having the ground suddenly move out from under my feet the next. 
nor do I believe that I am alone in this. I suspect that many of you have been there. In fact, I know you have. A friend of mine wrote so profoundly about this experience that I keep his song at the top of my playlist for just such times. The poignant melody has kept me company when I am alone at night, or sometimes after a day at my job when everything I've worked for suddenly seems pointless, or sometimes when I just need to pull over on the roadside and let grief overwhelm me. My friend's music reaches into my heart and allows the tears to just flow freely. I asked his permission to share it with you this morning. And so I wanna pause for a moment to share the song called In the Image. used to think that the angels did carry me Watching wherever I did roam So I walked without worry And wandered in comfort Knowing they'd lead me safely back home In I was made in the image I was born in the image have I fallen from grace for I've long lost my courage and I'm feeling discouraged and I want to get out of this place I used to think that the angels did talk to me Placing their words in my mouth So I spoke from my heart And spoke with conviction Spreading their message about In the image I was made In the image I in the image have I fallen from grace For I've long lost my courage And I'm feeling discouraged And I want to get out of this place Trying to recover from all the things that I've been through And I'm trying to rediscover all the good things I knew I used to think that the world was worth saving Despite the things we do and say So I gave what I could And gave what I had But then nothing did 
come back my way in the image I was made in the image I was born in the image have I fallen from grace for I've long lost my courage and I'm feeling discouraged and I want to get out of this place I just want to get out of this place So Ansel's music, I just let it wash over me. It mingles with whatever is happening in my life to bring me to that place of despair. Hearing him, I simply know that he's been there. Um, he's been there and this thing of deep beauty came out of that place. So what touches me and ultimately begins my very slow journey back into the light is giving voice to this sense of just homesickness. In the song, there's a yearning for what once was, for the faith of innocence and confidence of the sense that angels had walked with you and put their words in your mouth, that confidence that came from that knowing, for the identity as being one who is created in the image of God and whose path truly is grounded in holiness and divine joy. And it's there that I realize that the sense of loss speaks to my knowledge of what it means to be whole. I recognize that I can only feel sorrow because my soul remembers joy. It becomes clear that my despair speaks to the reality of hope. And my tears come from feeling apart from something that I know to be true, that my home is in that place of joy of hope and belonging. So I turn back to this desire for Christmas and I lean into its message and its music and I hear its call to return to that place where I can see my own image reflected in the face of a baby, a baby who was born out of God's longing to be with me to be with me even when I am alone at night, to be with me even when I am feeling that my work has no purpose, to be with me even when I'm crying with grief on the side of the road. That is when Christmas comes to us. God doesn't wait until December 25th to beam love into the world. God seeks us out each and every moment of each and every day. My favorite carol has long been the one that we sang this morning. It came upon a midnight clear. Its lyrics have become more profound to me with each passing year as each Christmas arrives. Each year, things have happened. I have been changed. 
and my singing of the song changes as well. As it turns out, this carol was written in 1849 by Edmund Sears, a minister who had himself suffered a breakdown and who was, even as he penned this poem, struggling with his own sorrow and his own despair, weighed down by the country's war with Mexico and by news of violence and upheaval from around the world. Reverend Sears was feeling that his own work had been for naught as no one seemed to be living the faith born into the world through Jesus. Like my friend Ansel's song, this carol, it came upon a midnight clear, always feels to me that it is just quietly coming to sit with me wherever I am. Listen to this verse. And you, beneath life's crushing load, I'm talking to you. You whose forms are bending low, who toil along the climbing way with painful steps and slow. Pay attention for glad and golden hours are coming to you swiftly on the wing. But for now, beloved ones, just rest. Rest beside the weary road and let the angels sing. In my own time and in God's own time, I begin to hear those voices faintly at first, quietly turning my heart toward them, their song reminding me of home. Living this mortal life as people who hold a vision of the world as God sees it, we not only know the joy of claiming that vision for ourselves, but we also know the deep sorrow and despair that comes from seeing the chasm that so often exists between a world shaped in the image of God and this one that we encounter every day. Simply being human, let's face it, it is not for the faint of heart. It is filled with suffering with injustice, with loss. Even Jesus had moments of tear-filled, wrenching despair. And this morning, I am not here to talk you out of that place. But if you're there, to simply share this space with you. A fellow disciple, a fellow homesick traveler, caught between that chasm of sorrow and a song of angels. And together I trust that we will once again lift our voices and sing our way back home. Amen. <laughs>